So there's been a lot of news this week about a decision that Justin Trudeau made in the omnibus budget bill that was tabled. Um, a lot of coverage about uh, changes to the immigration system that Justin Trudeau outlined uh, in, in a multi-hundred page uh, budget implementation bill. It was kind of, it, it, this is the same way that they put the deferred prosecution agreement for SNC-Lavalin uh, in the omnibus budget bill last year, the same sort of process. Um, I've been asked by a lot of media outlets to comment on this. Uh, and these changes relate to uh, the crisis at Roxham Road, the illegal border crossing crisis. And I've, uh, I wanted to take a few days to get my thought together, thoughts together on this issue because um, there's the issue with the policy itself, but there's, there's a more important issue at stake here. Um, and I want to talk about the policy changes for you in the context of this bigger issue. So you'll remember that this all started, the illegal border crossing crisis in Canada started in 2017. Now, Justin Trudeau, uh, in January 2017, in relation to a decision made by the American president to issue an executive order related to immigration within the United States, put out a, a tweet immediately, and it, you guys will all remember it. It was hashtag welcome to Canada. Now, Justin Trudeau will say, well, people didn't enter the country because of hashtag welcome to Canada. Of, co of course they did. Of course they did. It, it got international attention. It was retweeted tens of thousands of times. There are papers uh, showing that embassies and the Department of Immigration were inundated with calls about what this meant. So in res like, and you have to realize why Justin Trudeau did this. Why did Justin Trudeau tweet hashtag welcome to Canada? He did that to poke the Americans in the eye because he wanted to be contrasted with Donald Trump's policy on immigration. He wanted to be the woke guy uh, next to Donald Trump. Let's put American politics aside for a moment. Let's talk about Justin Trudeau. No matter how you slice it, uh, immigration deals with what? Human beings, okay? Uh, it also deals with the policies by which we as a sovereign nation in our country define who comes into the country and under what circumstances. So you have to be very careful, and no political party has been perfect at this, in dealing with immigration in terms of politics. In fact, there are situations in the past where I would even criticize my own political party on this. But let's talk about Trudeau for a second. Hashtag welcome to Canada. A tweet put out to poke the Americans in the eye and contrast for political gain. I mean, that's really what it was, right? Now, we have the proof point for why that was political gain, because fast forward uh, over the next few years, you'll remember that as we started seeing people like come to Canada after that, and how were they coming to Canada? They're in the United States, in upstate New York. Many of them are worried um, because they're on temporary um, removal or like their, 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 their stay of removals had been revoked under the Trump administration, uh, started to come to Canada. And then other people sort of started realizing that if you illegally entered the country, you, the safe third country didn't, agreement didn't apply and you had immediate access into Canada's very generous social welfare systems, free housing, uh, in some cases free daycare, um, that you know this was an easy way to enter our country. And rather than ask a really hard question about that relates to immigration and all these things I just talked about, the asking the question, is this the right way for people to be entering the country? Um, which, you know, there are differences of political opinion on this. My political opinion on this is that our asylum system was designed for people who are fleeing um, immediate instances of significant persecution and that if somebody is in upstate New York, that is not who Canada's asylum system was designed for. Park that for a second. Um, asking that question, is this proper, all of a sudden under Justin Trudeau became what? Racism. Right? You'll remember, how many times have I been called a racist? I don't know, I can't count anymore. I remember a press conference in Winnipeg where Ahmed Hussein called me, um, an Ontario cabinet minister, un-Canadian. I don't know how many times in the House of Commons there have been le ver uh, leveled threats of racism and um, et cetera. 
for asking the question, is it appropriate to allow people to enter Canada this way and claim asylum after having already reached the United States? I'm very clear. I mean, I have spent the better part of this argument, uh, this parliament advocating for people, genocide victims to come to Canada as refugees. I believe that Canada should have a strong asylum system. And you know, if you, if, I believe that Canada has a role to play in helping the world's most vulnerable. The question is how? So to, to level accusations of racism and being un-Canadian, um, I think that that really cheapened those terms, but let's park that for a minute and go back to the proof points on why this, you know, hashtag welcome to Canada was just for political points. Because after calling, like, I mean, I have stood before my party leader, Andrew Scheer, we have been saying, look, what's happening at Roxham Road is wrong. Justin Trudeau, you've said the safe third country agreement should apply, continue to apply. It shouldn't be rescinded. You can't have it both ways. Uh, you should close the loophole in the safe third country agreement. I've been calling on this for, for, for a long period of time. Now, the budget implementation bill has some very, very minor changes that would only apply to about 3,000 people out of the 40,000 that he's let in. And many civil um, advocacy groups say that these will not serve, this change will not survive court challenges. So we're still in a situation where people are still crossing the border illegally every day. Um, and I'll give you some stats to show that this, this, this small thing won't work. Um, there's a backlog of over 60,000 cases now because of hashtag welcome to Canada. The people who have entered the country, there's 60,000 cases. Uh, you know, in, in the Immigration Refugee Board, that means people who have applied for asylum status. Uh, that's how many cases there are to process. Um, the Parliamentary Budget Officer suspects that there's about a 36-month delay at present with that time growing, and then it'll probably go to 50 months with appeals. And what that means is it's 50 months before somebody would have a, like a removal order issued. And at that time, they can access social programs and et cetera, it's a lot of cost. What that means is about $1.1 billion by 2020, and then that doesn't, that's a federal cost, it doesn't include uh, the costs of um, social welfare payments paid by the provinces for this cohort of people who have entered the country over the last two years. So these changes don't stop that issue from getting worse. And there's an opportunity cost for that funding, right? Because that funding could be used for any number of other things. Uh, including making the immigration system more efficient and effective for those who want to come to Canada through the front door, right? But rather than dealing with all that stuff it, or addressing it, in putting this change forward, which won't, f frankly, by either on the left or the right politically, nobody thinks that this is going to work, all of a sudden he started using language that I've been using over the last two years, right? Like, we need to stop asylum claim shopping. Oh, really? So if you were serious about that, Trudeau, you would have done things to actually solve the problem. But more importantly, and going back to the, the thesis of my conversation here, this really is about politics for him because he wouldn't have even attempted this problem or, or this, the, he wouldn't have attempted this, this sne snuck in change in the Budget Implementation Act if he wasn't worried about the election, right? If he was truly, you know, if I was truly a racist and didn't care about immigration and Justin Trudeau is the hero of the Canadian immigration system, then why the change outside of crass politics? And regardless of what your feeling is on this issue, to use Canada's asylum system to go all over the place on messaging for it for political gain removes its agency the reason that it, or, or, or it, it removes and changes and, and just completely destroys the benevolence that it was created under, right? Like the asylum system was created for people fleeing war and terror, like fleeing for their lives in Canada, right? Now, all of a sudden, we see this man who used Canada's asylum system, tax dollars, over a billion dollars for politics. And that's what the problem is, more than anything, with what we've seen in the last two years. I mean, look, this is a giant mess. I don't have to, I don't have to talk to you guys about the giant mess that this has created in, in, in Canada's immigration system. All of those stats I just gave you bear fruit to that, or, or bear witness to that. The reality is, is that the bigger problem is, is that Justin Trudeau has created this 
environment in Canada where we can't talk about public policy related to immigration anymore because of all of his accusation of racism for political gain that he's now done an about face on. I don't, I don't know. Maybe he hasn't. And we just have this giant mess. You know, I watched him, um, you know, because the Liberals have been trying to change the channel in the House of Commons uh, using accusation of racism and white supremacy on the SNC-Lavalin scandal. I want to be very clear. I think, um, I do think white supremacy is a problem around the world. Extremism in general is a problem. And we act, and actually there is racism that happens in Canada that people experience that we aren't addressing adequately, that we need to call out. But to cheapen the use of the word racism when we're trying to have a public policy discussion on how to manage our immigration system is probably like when it, there's so many disgusting things Trudeau has done but to me because it relates to people's lives and and people who actually want to come to Canada to flee persecution and he has created this you know this this vile and derogatory public policy context and or you know forum in, in Canada I, I, that's what's disgusting that is terrible so let's let's talk about because people are like well michelle what would you do differently i think it's actually really important to make that whole argument first that, that i just made to talk about like i if, if i was immigration minister this or if andrew Scheer had been prime minister right now this wouldn't have been a problem and i'll tell you why because we wouldn't have used the asylum system in the way Justin Trudeau has for politics. We wouldn't have tweeted hashtag welcome to Canada because we would understand that the United States is a sovereign country. They're gonna make their own immigration decisions. There's other fori that we have to talk about immigration policy around the world in a productive, positive way rather than a tweet that poked people in the eye. We wouldn't have done that. That would not have happened. And then we wouldn't have, after we saw a problem, waited two years, three years to start talking about, well, maybe we should talk to the Americans about this agreement, the safe third country agreement, you know, going into an election. There's, there's nothing on the table for implementation. Do you think Justin Trudeau is going to change the safe third country agreement before, before, before the election? No, of course he's not. Americans aren't going to do anything with him. And they're especially not going to do anything with him after, you know, Christia Freeland. Do you remember Christia Freeland? I guess it's about a year ago now, in the middle of the NAFTA negotiations, went and sat on a stage, on a TED Talk or something like that, where she proudly sat under this video banner that compared the American president to the Syrian dictator. Do you think that that helped get, would help get this agreement done or help us build a relationship with our, the largest undefended border, or the, person to the, the country to the south there to get public policy done? No, of course not. You know, do you think Justin, and I can tell you right now, I think that we do need to have a conversation in Canada about who is prioritized under Canada's refugee and asylum systems. That's a tough conversation to have because we actually have to talk about who is more persecuted than others and how many and how much resources Canada is willing to put into these type of systems. That's a tough conversation. We're all gonna have different opinions on that, right? But that's a conversation that we should be having. Instead, we have this guy who was using the immigration system to, for self-aggrandizement and to score political points. You know, I, I, the reason why I went out in August of last year, it feels so long ago, but you, I think you'll remember this, I gave almost like an hour and a half long press conference in Ottawa where I dumped a lot of the Conservative Party's immigration platform. Many of it, th the things that the Liberals are kind of looking at now because they know that they're the good policy. There's a reason why I did that. And I said it specifically in the press conference. I kind of don't want to be talking about immigration in, in, you know, in the context that it's being brought up in. Because we should be able to be talking about how, not if in Canada. We should be able to say, okay, let's have a rational conversation around how many people come into the country and under what circumstances, right? Like that should be a, a, a conversation that, we, that just happens. And we might, yeah, we might disagree on it, uh, even even really strongly disagree on it between parties, but it's a conversation that we should be able to have without, you know, all of a sudden now being in a conversation where it's if, right? And, and that's really, I think, Justin Trudeau's lasting legacy to immigration in Canada. So, you know, I've been, I've had so many interview requests on this, you know, how do I feel? It's not about one specific policy or, you know, one specific quote that Justin Trudeau has done. It's about his, you know, to me, the, 
what happened, th this change that's been snuck into the Budget Implementation Act um, is the capstone of four years of disgustingness with Justin Trudeau uh, with regard to using the asylum system and the refugee system in Canada to score cheap political points rather than focusing on people's lives. And that's what's wrong. So for any media that are watching, I hope that there's some columns written about this. Uh, and I hope that as a country, we walk away from that principle. I proudly think that our country can get back to that. I, am, I would be proud to help push that movement forward, as I have been and my party leader, Andrew Scheer, has been for several years now. But I guess we will be having this conversation in the election. Um, but I hope you share this video. I know it's a long one, um, but I think it's really important. I think it's important to understand this issue. And I think it's important to hold Justin Trudeau to account for for, for, for cheapening um, conversations because he desires political gain uh, rather than dealing with really tough issues in a smart way, which is what a prime minister should do. Working hard for you. Have a great day.